laid back it can be come anything that we want so yeah yeah great i mean I, we're in the middle of the we're in the middle of my well it is my apartment but it's become our production office while we're shooting this whole thing so there's people moving around us and and, and yeah one of the producers is working right over there and hearing our whole conversation so oh good so we'll oh good wonderful yeah. wonderful so um well, let's start at the beginning. Welcome, Sebastian. Really great that you're here and that you uh, found some time in your busy schedule to uh, to come and talk about your movie project. And um, um, yeah, I would love you to introduce yourself a little bit too, so I can hear how you look at you. <laughs> sure. And um, so yeah. today it's it's a really like a bit like feeling what is inspiring you. How do you do this? How does this come to you? Why did you set this up? And more like that. Please, so, yeah. so we'll see how this uh, how this goes and how this ends up. Sure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how, how? Yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, there was a lot there. Uh, Sebastian. Uh, you, I know you know me, but Sebastian Piggott. Sebastian Piggott is my name. Um, I've been an actor for about uh, shit. You know about. Geez, almost 20 years now, making my living that way for about uh, 15. And um, this, you know, whole situation in the world that kind of happened, which will go unnamed um, in the last two years, really just was an apocalypse for me personally. And a lot of old ways I would made my living and lived my life kind of just were crumbling away. So it's kind of forced on me to move into making movies. And it, it, right. it, in, in retrospect, it was perfect. And it was the exact time when I needed to be doing it. But, you know, sometimes your courage needs to come from strange places. Yeah. And so uh, we took the jump into this, you know, with no money in my purse, as they say. And the lovely thing has been, as I've gone along, everything has just sort of unfolded as needed. And so it's just been, I mean, I have no idea. To, it's just been amazing to kind of watch it all come together. Um, and, and additionally, to find out that I'm really good at it. <laughs> Oh, well, that's one. It is new, you know, mm -hmm. it is new. And, and uh, I was qualified to do it. Like I said, the timing was perfect. I'd been an actor for about 20 years. I wrote my own movie, spent about 12 years getting it produced. And I was one of the producers on it. I acted in it and I got to become on set the whole time. And yeah, so it was nice to, to sort of go on this journey and realize how, how I'd, I'd been prepared for it all along and that I was ready to do it. And it's just been great, man. The people that have come on board. Yeah, you know, it's a real like if you build it, they will come kind of thing. Everybody's yeah. just coming on board. Nobody, everybody's doing it with with you know, and wanting to, but but no, with no money is what I mean to say. Nobody's getting paid up front at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody and any of these kind of top quality people. Yeah, we have joining the team. Somebody we did need. I mean, even when when you're talking about making a movie for no money, you're still talking about spending a whole bunch mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we, even that, you know, somebody came along with money and, and then has continued to invest. Yeah. In the gone along. So it's just been amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you, you can't, you can't share the plot, but can you lift a little of the, <laughs> uh, yeah. can you, can you tell us a little bit about the project that you're actually doing? Because it's yeah, of a project. I can. Yeah. Yeah. Of course I can, yeah, because I kind of spoke about it in a broad way there without explaining what it is. So this is, you know, to give you a little backstory, the film I referred to that I spent 12 years trying to get made that I wrote, it really was 12 years of like actively. Okay, so this one, it was already on the shelf, so to speak. Not this one, the one I made before this oh, one. Oh, yeah, all right, okay. To. Yeah, we, I spent yeah. about 12 years getting it. It's called Two Deaths of Henry Baker. And mm -hmm. that movie just came out. It's available right now. Anybody can go out and, uh, and buy it online. Yeah. Um, uh, it went to Austin Film Festival and did pretty good, but I spent 12 years getting it made. I eventually partnered. We had, we became very close a bunch of times with a few yep. different producers and directors. Yep. And then I finally partnered with a guy named Felipe Mucci. And he's, he was a director at that time, straight out of American Film Institute, which is one of the top, you know, you hear about NYU, you hear about American Film Institute, one of those, those top film schools. And he was just, you know, it was the right time. He was looking for a film. And so I partnered with him and we spent about five years and eventually got the money to get that one made there was a you know once again very close to get it made a few times so eventually he 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 got it to warner brothers and, and we got a warner subsidiary that gave us about uh we had about eight hundred thousand dollars to get it made at the end which is you know a small amount of money for a feature film but um mm -hmm. but it but it but it's it's a heck of a lot 
more than we've got right now. So that film did well. We went to Austin Film Festival and we were we were uh, we were uh, well received and we got a good distri distribution deal with Saban, Saban Films. And so basically that whole team, that whole creative team, because there were a lot of my friends who were involved in acting in it and things like yeah. that. We did all of the own, our own music in house. And so I kind of got to this point and I and I decided um, that really the only way I could move forward with any passion was to do something myself. So this, the, so that brings us to this this film, which is I wrote back in in 2018, um, mm -hmm. and I just I just turned 35, and I, I to be honest was facing a lot of the questions I'm facing now, which is that I I you know I I'd, I'd been working as an actor for about 10 years at that point, and I'd had I'd had some real successes, mm -hmm. you know, especially you know early on. But, you know, I'd kind of plateaued. And, and more than that, the work I was doing was in no way creatively satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it was really working for a dollar. And if I was honest with myself, that's, that's you know, why I was doing it the way I was doing it at that yeah. time. I yeah, sure. So really, it, it was written about a guy turning 35. That's what the film's about. And so the plot of the film, which was kind of a metaphor, you know, obviously for myself, it's about this guy who was a hotshot athlete out of high school. His name's Eddie Backus. And he was, you know, one of these guys who, 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 who had it all laid out for him. You know, you talk about entitled. He didn't come from money, but he was just that dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All the girls wanted him. All the guys wanted to be him, like they say. Mm -hmm. Hotshot athlete. Uh, ended up going, getting, playing professional baseball. And yeah. his, whole claim, his whole claim to fame is that he hit a home run at Yankee Stadium. You know, yeah. so he had like this little cup of coffee. Everybody yeah. saw him back home and then he hurt his knee and his, and his career was, was kind of over. And so at this, the point of the movie is, is he's been gone for five years. Nobody's seen him for five years and he shows up out of nowhere, comes back home <clears throat> on this, um, on this kind of drug induced or this kind of drug fueled mission from God. He calls it this mission from God to liberate all his friends from oncoming middle age you know, with this message of like <laughs> eternal youth and like, let's, it's not too late. Let's seize our, yeah. our moment before, before our, you know, it's gone. <laughs> you know, and of course he's also, so, so he, he ends up at, kind of in spite of himself. Cause of course he crashes and burns by the end. It has to face his own, yeah. his own hypocrisy essentially. But, but sort of in spite of himself, he, he serves as a kind of angel of liberation for a lot of his friends because, because at the end, throughout the movie, you eventually realize they're all, they're all struggling with the, the, the same issue. Just, you know, he has one friend that at the beginning, you sort of think of as virtuous. And by the end of the movie, you, you realize he's not virtuous. He's just a coward. He was just, he was just too timid to ever really make a decision. And so he li lived this very flaccid life, you know? And anyway, that, that, that's, that, that's the broad strokes of the story. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, a yeah. lot of fun. It's a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So, so you were inspired to write this. This came to you when you were doing this, right? When you were writing the story. This the the, the story, yeah, yeah. Well, I had I actually had a friend who's in the movie now named Zion. Zion Forrest Lee is his name, and he's an actor and filmmaker from Canada. Mm -hmm. And he was part of he's part of a, a production company up there that, that that they 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 started doing what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And so I'd seen one of their first films that they'd finished called Cherry Picker, which is out now. Um and I thought, dang, you know, I've been trying to get this other movie made for 12 years. I've been trying to raise all this money. Dang, yeah. I, I, I just got to write one that we can do ourselves. So that's where it kind of started. And then there were a few movies. John Cassavetes is a huge influence. Uh, I think I think on a, on a lot of, uh, you know, quote unquote, method actors in my generation. And so there was a there was a film of his called Husbands that I'd just seen. It's about a bunch of guys going through a real midlife crisis. You know, they're in their mid 40s. Yeah. And, uh, and so it was that that film kind of. Yeah, those two, I, I decided I wanted to do something like that for my generation and what I where I was kind of at in my life, you know, mm -hmm. facing because because I think for my generation, like we have this prolonged adolescence, especially for for, you know, middle class kids, uh, fairly entitled kids of, of my generation, artists, especially there's this prolonged adolescence. And, and, and he's got this there's this character who's got this thing in the movie where she's talking about turning 35 and she's like, you know, you you turn 25 and it's, it's almost like 18. You know, if you, if you just squint and then you turn 28, you turn 30, it's almost like 25, you know, and then suddenly like you get to be 35 and you just, you just can't squint that much anymore. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's almost yeah, like yeah. you went from 18 to 35 all at once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what I kind of wrote. And I, and I wrote it completely stream of consciousness mm -hmm. and, and it, as much as possible, I was just trying to be literally true 
So, <laughs> so going into that process a little bit is then, so you yeah. sit down and you start writing. It's like that. You let it flow through. Not quite, not quite. Like you have to do, for me anyway, and I know everybody works differently, so I wouldn't say there's one empirical yeah. way to do it. But, but for me, I have to do a lot of, a lot of outlining and structuring before yeah. I get to that point, because yeah. I think that's just natural to storytelling, to be honest. Like if I was to tell you a story right now, I was to say, Vim, Vim, I got to tell you about, as I'm sure I've done many times, but I got to tell you about this thing that happened to me. Yeah. You know, I would tell you that story stream of consciousness, but I wouldn't be making it up. And if yeah. I was making it up, you would go, man, eh, this sounds made up, you know? And so I think it's the same with writing a piece of narrative. You got to know that story. Yeah. Inside. yeah. And so so it's like you have a backbone, family. you have a backbone and then you. Yeah. You have a blueprint, especially yeah. with filmmaking. I think mm -hmm. even more so yeah, than yeah. With maybe writing a novel because you're dealing with time. Literally when you're writing mm -hmm. a film, you're dealing with time. You're dealing with the two hours, for example, and you have to yeah. divide that up structurally. And yeah, that's yeah. going to affect how the audience inputs or receives that is, yeah. is going to work. So I do, a, I do a tremendous amount of structuring, restructuring, and yeah. then I, and I expand on that structure and do notes until yeah. I just get to a point, I just get to a point where I feel like I have to write it. I go, Oh, I got to write that first scene. I know what that first scene is. I got to write it. Yeah. And yeah. that's when I'm off to the races. Once that happens, yeah. you're off to the races. And then I go with stream as consciousness, at least, at least depending on the project, they can be some of them. If it's, if it's a real detailed piece of science yeah. fiction, you might have to be more deliberate in your writing, but, but with most of the stuff I write, at that point, I go as stream of consciousness as I can because I have a, it's all laid out. There's nothing to think about. Yeah. It's all there. So I just go and, and, then, and then you're just, you're just visualizing the scene happening, just writing it down as it happens. And then when people start talking, I mean, the first, usually the first couple scenes, I'll have to go back at the end and yeah. rewrite them because for, to a certain degree, characters are finding their voice. Yeah, yeah, but halfway yeah. through that first act, you can yeah. feel it click in and you're just off and running, you know? Yeah. And then what I've realized... That's why it's so satisfying. And that's why I, what I know this podcast for you is about is about people really doing things in the way they to their to their highest. Truth. Exactly. You know, they're, they're, they're yeah. highest standard. And that's what's been so satisfying about about this is it's really made me realize how we don't as professionals, as artists and, you know, and as an actor, you work as a professional, how often how rarely you do that. And, and, and when you're writing a script, usually you're not writing it at all mm -hmm. to make the best movie. What you're doing is you're writing it for the market. And it's a decidedly different thing because you'll get a script to a certain point yeah. where it's getting ready for a director to come on board. And then you start bringing on actors, you start thinking about what does it mean? And then you start filling it out. You start adding style, yeah. you know, but if you're writing for the market, you really, you overbake the cake, you mm -hmm. overbake the cake. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, you know, I wrote one draft of it completely stream of consciousness. And then instead of as usual, where you'd send it out to your agents and producers and they'd give you notes and then you, instead I, I left it alone. And then I went back at some point and I did one polished draft. I yeah. think I rewrote, I think I rewrote one section of it. The rest, I was just polishing dialogue. And then I left it alone and I need, I knew it needed an ending and I knew it needed a few other little scenes here, but I just left it alone. And so then when it came back to doing it this time, it was great because we started working on it and we started talking about it with the actors and you were in a play. And I was like, oh, I know what that ending is. That's great. Great. Pop it in there. No problem. You know, it wasn't a problem. And then, and then we needed the scene at one point, the scene we're shooting today, actually. It's hilarious. It wasn't in there, you know? And once again, I, I got this actor, we were, talking about how to develop this one part. And I was like, oh, I always needed a scene there. Now, now I know exactly what it is. And now it's, you know, it's one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, that, uh, so this is one thing then, the writing and the structuring and the writing. And then it has to be translated into acting. So, so you, right, yeah. you, you ask someone else to act, uh, act it out. So there's, there's a transfer of ideas and you want to... How, how does that go with, uh, with well, your actor well, that you... Well, this is exactly it. This is exactly it. And that's different for every uh, director who might come on board. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I mean about overbaking the cake as a writer. Mm -hmm. And when you're yeah. writing it to the market, mm -hmm. you, you're taking these people and they're going, okay, how do we finish this? Excuse me. How do we finish this script? They'll go, well, this script isn't finished. Mm -hmm. We can't sell this script because it isn't finished. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, Vim? Mm -hmm. What is a finished script? A finished script is a movie. Of course, the of course it's not finished. It's a movie. It's not a script, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like bringing in the house, a, a blueprint for how you're going to structure a house. And they're going, well, it's not what color are the drapes. And you're going, what are you talking about? I'm trying yeah, to build a yeah. foundation. You know, so when you get a director on board, that's when that next step takes place, right? And they mm -hmm. they may have any number of processes. They may, in, this, in the case of this film, because like, like I said, it's very much in the Cassavetes kind of school. The correct way to do a film like this is to develop it with the actors. So you bring the actors in, you start, you start working it. And then, and then I added, started adding dimensions. Another director might work differently, but the important thing is you then bring that to the, so, you know, you, 
I advocate you bring it. If you're trying to make the best film possible, as opposed to make the most money, and that is the devil in the in the, in, the, in this thing. It is that people. It's that it's pure and simple. It's the money. People mm -hmm. can't get. They can't stop worrying about the money. We all understand that, but you just have to get over it. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not, if your goal is to make the best film possible, you get it to a point where it's ready and people get it. And it's all there. You know, all the, the important guts of it are there. Right. And then you find a director. Yeah. And you don't take that next step to the director because they they come on and they go, oh, I know how to make this film. I want to take this angle with it. And that's going to dictate a totally different rewrite. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? There's a million yeah. great films in yeah. there, you know, yeah. or another yeah. way. Yeah. Anyway, you understand what I mean. So, so going back then to you, because you have a certain, mm -hmm. say, way of doing this and you, mm -hmm. you want this kind of vision put in there. Mm -hmm. So how how is that for you? What is that for you? How well one, it, it's just been awesome, man. Because of, because I'm new to it, you mm -hmm. know, and, and because my background is comp it, it, as a director, you know, as an actor, I found myself, especially by about ten years into it, I found myself so encumbered with other people's ideas mm -hmm. that that my work was sometimes good, but but it was never it it was so impure, you know, it was just. I yeah. was always trying to fight through this this yeah. veil of other people's ideas and yeah. not just that the way the entire industry is geared against you. And so then when I came into this as, as a director, I have none of that. And and as I was developing as a, as a writer, because yeah. acting, because acting was my main focus, yeah. as a writer, I just let myself do it completely for myself. Right. And yeah. I really like I could I'm trying to as, as long winded as I am, I'm trying to cut long stories short because they are long. Um, I really ended up burning some bridges because as a writer, I was like, no, no, this is for me. I act yeah. professionally. I, I yeah. take, do what I'm told. But, and so now coming at it as a director, it's the same thing. I've been able to go, okay, what do I want to do? And because I've completely invested in this thing now, I've taken yeah. this, moment, like I've, I've completely shut down my agents. I, I said, I'm not doing any more acting jobs. I'm not doing, taking any auditions or anything until I do. So because the investment was complete, every time I'm looking at it, I'm going, okay, what do I want to do with this? I'm not encumbered with these film school ideas mm -hmm. that this is the correct way to shoot a scene. So we've come up with this really simple but incredibly effective way of shooting it, which, which is basically, and because of, I described kind of what the project is, because it's really immersive and it's supposed to feel, it's supposed to feel real. Not all movies are like that. This one's supposed to feel real. Yeah. So I don't, basically we do, we work with three shots. And, and we do two sizes on one of them. We do an, a, an incredibly wide establishing. And we that varies depending on which character we're with. But it's it's much wider than usual. And it's 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 um completely uh what, what, what's the word? Uh indifferent. It's an indifferent establishing mm -hmm. shot. So so for example, I've got a shot of them coming of, of the two of the leads guys coming out of the market and they've got this or out of like a, a variety store, a convenience store, and they got this scene. But the, the wide shot that I do isn't of them. Mm -hmm. It's of the convenience store. And so they're actually off center. And I do that throughout the film. And it's to create this sense of uh, alienation from their world. And then I, I contrast that with what I call the invisible man. So it's a handheld shot, which we've seen before. But this one I treat mm -hmm. it as if it's literally another person in the scene. So yeah. there's no tracking shots, you know, where people might be walking towards the camera. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Every move it makes has to be a movement natural to you understand yeah natural and so it's a little high concept at times and we push that a little bit but you know it's it's try not to be distracting and then we do two sizes on that mm -hmm. so one's a bit wider and one's a bit closer and then the third shots we do the third set of shots we do is a, a series of inserts mm -hmm. we do a whole bunch of inserts and those can be like i got this great scene where he's in his, he's talking to his mother and she's saying these horrible things about immigrants she's uh, just saying vitriolic horrible things and he's um I'm not political, but she's just being hateful. <laughs> I mean, she's just being hateful. Right? But while she's doing that, we 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 have these series of injuries because her whole kitchen is decorated with these kind yeah. of inane, yeah, inane yeah. positive placards. Like mm -hmm. she's holding a cup that says "Love is the answer." Yeah, you know. So I've got all these injuries. You know, like the coffee cup, and so we 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 use those to cut between the, this wide and and so some of these scenes just play in one shot. They just play. I've got this great shot that goes on for three minutes that just plays in the Invisible Man shot I described. Yeah. So it's just this guy following him around, and, and we've got this horrific fight coming on, going on, and then he, you know, anyway, I, I can yeah, go no, on and on. No, no this is great. This is great. So, so, so really, actually, it, it's it, like really, uh, you let the 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 one who's going to watch the movie. That's another step. Uh, that's right. You, you're going to let him in as as the uh, the character itself. That's right. That's yeah. right exactly. So it comes very exactly. close. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just cool to come once again, just to come at that from a place of going, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, instead yeah. of uh, my, my whole career as an actor, I was so ambitious and so hungry. And yeah. I was always like, what do I have to do? What should I do? Instead, this time it's like, 
okay. Like I'm not like what, what, what you know. And there's no actor in the movie in a certain sense. Yeah. Like he's not visible in the movie. Hardly. That's right. We call him the Invisible Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we call him the Invisible That's Man. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, thanks, yeah. man. It's working really, really well. And then the guy, <laughs> the uh, the director of photography we have, is just fantastic. So it's working hmm. really well. Nice, nice. So that's great that you have a good team then. They're amazing, man. Everybody. So, so, so how good. how do you work together? The, um, how how does that work? Like, uh, do you come in in the morning and just chat what you're gonna do, and then you go off and do it? Well, the way we've had to do it, and I think the only way this could possibly work, because it is my, and as much as I say, like, I, I'm finding out that I'm really good at this, it's also my first time. And, and mm -hmm. I'm not only directing it, like, we're producing the whole thing in-house. So yeah. the only way that it would work, I think, is the way we're doing it. And it's also the way we have to do it, which is that we're we're breaking it up into kind of two-day blocks. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a total of 10 two-day blocks. It'll be about a 20-day 20, 20 shoot. Yeah. And then, you know, the first day, so it's really broken up. We, we actually took, a, like, a, a two-and-a-half-month hiatus over Christmas. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 then so it, it started at the end of october to land kind of the beginning of june so what that allows us to do is really focus in on each kind of you know minute detail and really mm -hmm. really take our time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of what we've been doing because obviously everybody else has has jobs to working yeah. on working on films and making money you know yeah so um, how do you align with one another like how how do you come into the same place when you're shooting or when you're trying to set this up like how how do you do that like to, for instance with yeah. with when you play music together in the band you, you have one way of tuning in with each other so how how do you do that with your film crew is there a way a, that you do it it's a really interesting question i mean i it's probably a question that i'll be able to answer better as i move along as a director because i'm okay. still new so yeah, yeah, yeah. i do you know and you know i do a lot of the work that i do to to make sure that the, the right state of consciousness is active. Mm -hmm. And then I find that the rest unfolds magically. And the people who've been, who've come involved, become involved are all involved for the right reasons. Right. Yeah. Nobody is, nobody is here for a paycheck. I just yeah. saw a film that a friend of mine made that'll go unnamed and, you know, they spent a million dollars and I'm watching mm -hmm. it. I'm going, yeah, these guys all got paid. You know, you mm -hmm. watch it and you're like, yeah, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. In this case, like nobody's going to be here unless they yeah. want to. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So. yeah. There's a real motivation, oh. intrinsic motivation. Yeah, like and I what I would it. say is that that's one of the things I find amazing about movies. Like you spoke about collaborating in a band. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have three, four, five, maybe seven people in a band mm -hmm. on a movie. Like that's just scratching the surface. And so the amazing thing that always happens on a movie is that it's everybody is consumed by the energy of yeah. the movie. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about it. Yeah, and that, that's for better or worse, right? Because sometimes you're on a real piece of garbage movie, or, or one, <laughs> you know, yeah, or yeah, 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 toxic energy, and mm -hmm. you're going to be consumed by it, you know. And you, then you get to choose your role and all that, and you can try yeah. to approach that in a positive way, but there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, and yeah. so in the case of this one, once again, that's one of the things that you just stand back and you, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're kind of in awe, and and and. It's just so beautiful to be a part of it when you get when you get something that's beautiful like this and to watch people get consumed by that mm -hmm. and they all kind of get lit up by it and it increases it increases at first there's a natural skepticism because we've all been part of movies that purported to be doing it for the right reasons yeah. oh, this is gonna be great. usually if you don't mind me swearing they turn out to be pieces of shit and then you end up end up being really you know disillusioned yeah. so to on this one, as people, you know, and anything go wrong. So I'm not getting ahead of myself, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean yeah, really. yeah, of course, of course. But yeah. you know, on this one, when people are seeing that it's working, you know, yeah. there's palpable excitement, and it's, you know, the the main thing is that I keep telling myself and keep telling everybody is let's just stay, stay grounded and stay focused, because mm -hmm. you can get in the excitement of it. You get drunk on it. You get drunk on it, and and mm -hmm. you can mess up. Yeah. And we're in the middle of it now, so it's just like stay focused. But it's just been magic, them. Yeah. Now, yeah like this and there's no money nobody's getting paid i'm living close to the bone i keep having to give myself treatments not to worry about money but it's, it's never been happier it's just magic man it's this is it like this is why i this is yeah. what i want to be doing yeah. this is it and it, it's just i could i mean I, i'm trying to not be verbose man i know i am <laughs> I'm here anyway. it's just so exciting, man i could talk about mm -hmm. it yeah um, yeah no it's it's great that's lovely that's thank you for sharing that it's really awesome it's oh, really great to hear that, that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this um, when when you uh, say start shooting, is there is there also a lot of like in the moment new creative uh, action, so to speak, of the actor? 
Yeah. Is there a lot of freedom to 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 literally do that? Okay. Yeah. So and I think it has to be on this one because it's not like like I described the way we're shooting it. What we're mm -hmm. not doing is coverage normally on a, a shoot the standard way of doing it. Mm -hmm. It was on and on about how obsolete it is. But usually you'll do overs, right? You'll do yeah, you'll you you'd recognize it. You shoot that actor over my shoulder, you'd see a bit of my shoulder, you'd see their face, and then go, okay, we're turning around. You know, you scrub all the background, you turn around, you shoot it this way. And so what the nice thing about that is is you can pick and choose which takes you want to use. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You, can, you can cut around things. In this, we don't have that that option. So what it does mean is the actors have to be totally believable all the time. So it yeah. means they have to be able to make things up. If something happens, they have to be making them. Now, now sometimes that's just behaviorally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. it means they do something. Yeah. But, but you know, uh, so and it I gives mean, you I mean, then, yeah, when you start to cut this later on, it gives you a lot of freedom to to scramble with that too, to use that. Well, in the case of this one, I can't, right? In the case of the way we're shooting this one, we're not doing these overs, right? Mm -hmm. In the case of this one, we have this invisible man shot that I described, yeah. which kind of carries the action. So really the, the actors, we have this philosophy on this movie that either the camera's moving or the actors are moving because as soon as the camera sits still and the actor sits still, it just becomes a boring show. You go, oh shit, it's just a guy holding a handheld pointing at a guy, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we keep constant dynamics. So, so really, instead of doing, like I said, we, instead of going, okay, now it's time, Vim, we're going to do your close up. No, no yeah. we're not doing that. Instead, the camera, you're either you're going to move, and a lot of time the actor will actually move the camera, yeah. and you're going to turn the camera around at some point through your, you are going to come close. It's going to come close. You're going to turn it around to point at the other person. Yeah. So, we're really planning, we're really editing it in camera in that way. Yeah. So, what it doesn't, it doesn't give me the advantage, like you said, it doesn't give me the advantage of choosing takes. Yeah. I can choose one single take that works pretty much. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a little bit, don't get me wrong. It's not one, the whole scene isn't playing in one take, mm -hmm. but I don't have it's not like I can go, okay, just cut to the other person. No, I gotta, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can get, I can get kind of stuck. And I, and it almost happened to me twice once because there was a scene where a guy's supposed to push me. Mm -hmm. and, and the way he did it is the way he's been trained to do it because you're going to do a cut. Usually you're going to do a little fake push and then we're going to do a cut on that to the other guy falling back and still yeah. push. Me. Yeah. In this case, there's no cut. So you can clearly see that he was just. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, one, I, had, I was i thought I, I i thought maybe i don't have my movie unfortunately i had one take and you can literally, literally hear me say right before we take go right before i call action you hear me say push me push me hard you know and then he does it and so i had this one take i could actually use and there was another where i'm supposed to drink from a bottle of whiskey mm -hmm. and it completely it was the worst acting you've ever seen i was watching i'm going well you're a bad actor you know and that's because i do this i do this first of all the bottle of whiskey's empty right and i've got a torn paper bag and you can see it's empty and then i do i go like no swallow, no swallow on anything. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's yeah. in, again, like normally that would be fine on a shoot because you cut around it. And in this case, I was like, oh, you don't have your movie now just because of this one, yeah. this one little thing. And once again, fortunately, because it's it, it's been that kind of experience. Fortunately, there was literally, literally been one take that was usable. And so I was, I was like, okay, scene safe. <laughs> so that's why why they usually shoot it the way they do because it gives them a lot of safety they can kind yeah, of yeah 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 exactly it's so it's cool. almost like a documentary it's like a one-time occurrence something is happening in one moment and that's it that's, that's right you have to yeah where you have to work with then that's, that's right but it, that that's right. kind of keeps you right on the edge of your seat then it, and that's also where the magic is man yeah you know? yeah i can imagine yeah yeah the, the hardest thing is then not to fall asleep when everything is written out and all this and then you start to act and you start to repeat things and and in fact there's no life to the acting anymore because you're just doing your little scene and that's it then that's what okay. you don't want right like to 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 stay close to the moment where something occurs and where you actually don't know what's going to happen yeah. it can be really helpful then well big time and i mean any yeah. any any remedial acting class will tell you that that's the whole idea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the amazing thing is that if yeah. you will at day one you will practice that for your first few years in training as an actor yeah. then you'll become a professional actor and you'll yeah. work complete opposite way for the next few years. yeah 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 it's, it's, it's the same as uh, say improvising on an instrument finally yeah. you can do that first you have to get the skills a bit and then you can take off mm. huh so interesting, really interesting. So if you look at this as an as an uh, sculpture, so what what would it be? Your project, because mm -hmm. it's almost like sculpturing that you're talking to me about too. Like you make yeah. a big sculpture. So what sculpture would it be? What what shape would it have? If you had to translate it into form? Well, I mean, I immediately pictured something very abstract. 
immediately pictures something very abstract. I don't know. I don't know why. And what colors would it have? Well, it has a lot of blues and purples. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of blues and purples. <laughs> 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 well, this is my favorite color. That's great. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's been so cool. It's been so cool. It's, it's changed my whole way of uh, mm -hmm. thinking about acting, too. Hmm. But I'm telling you, like that, and you described it exactly when the way they normally shoot things, they'll shoot things in overs. Yeah. So if you and I were doing a scene together, we do a wide shot usually. They go, okay, first we're going to do an established shot. That would be the only time you and I would really be in the frame together and acting. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Nobody cares about the wide shots. So nobody's no. really trying anyway, right? And then they go, okay, now we're going to go into coverage. So we're going to do Vim's side first, right? So now you're acting. So you're going, okay, I'm all keyed up, which is great because you, you're going to really give, give it an effort. But the only problem yeah. is, you know, everybody's looking at you. You really don't want to lose your paycheck. So you're really tense, right? So you're trying to do a good job, but you're really tense now, right? Yeah, yeah. The other guy on the other side of the scene knows it's your coverage. First of all, doesn't want to screw up what you you have planned. And you guys don't, don't really talk because it might be the first time you've met. You've just shown up. They don't have enough money to pay yeah, you for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not a thing they do in professional productions. You have to pay a lot of money not to have time, right? So you guys are just met. So he doesn't want to screw up your performance. So he's probably not going to give you too much. He's probably just going to give you kind of a flat reading. If you're lucky, if you're unlucky, he really just isn't even paying attention at all, you know, and, and, and also you have a bunch of guys moving around in the background, right? So you're going to do yours, then they're going to we're gonna go tighter, right? You're going to do the same thing. You're going to turn around and they're going to do his side. And then they're going to send it over to an editor who wasn't there, hasn't talked to the director, hasn't talked to you guys, yeah, and they're yeah, going to yeah, yeah, yeah. create your performance out of all this footage they put together. And then you're going to watch it and you're going to go, why doesn't this have any passion or feeling in it? You know, mm -hmm. like how could it? Mm -hmm. It's it's maddening. Yeah, you know? yeah. So so, what do you think is is your um, say the group of people that will watch this? Who, who for who will this be attractive to watch? What do you think? Oh, it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. This movie. Yeah, and I I think that 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 we're at a place now where people are ready for new stuff. I think mm -hmm. they just, I mean, the old Netflix model of doing things. You know, it's amazing to call it an old model when it when it's been around about 10 years, but that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't work. It, it only worked when Netflix was completely dominating the market because it cost them a tremendous amount of money yeah. to make, make a show. And then people consume it in two days and they never watch it again. And so now and now that the market's been divided amongst I don't know how many streaming services yeah. there are. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore. So what they need is they need small groups of people that can produce cheap content mm -hmm. at a very quality very quickly and the thing is we can do that now mm -hmm. 20 years ago when this when this old model of doing things was created you couldn't you couldn't do that it, it just cost a tremendous amount of money to make a piece of product that's not the case yeah. anymore yeah. you know you don't even need to light anymore so no. so i just think everything's changing i think i think we're i think we're we're at perfect time to be doing what we're doing we're really trying to qualify ourselves to be yeah, like yeah. a mini studio so i don't think it's necessary to dominate the market i don't think that's even a possibility the way the mm -hmm. beatles whomever you might say there's just too many you're not looking to do that anymore what you're looking to do is carve out your own little audience mm -hmm. that's very faithful mm -hmm. and if you can deliver things if we can deliver high quality films for yeah. under half a million dollars and we have a little built-in audience that's all we need a little faithful audience mm -hmm. that, that's all i that's all i want and that's all you need you know yeah 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 so, so how, how what do you think will be your audience what what do i think would be the audience yeah well i think they're going to be really fun films so frankly, I think everybody's the audience for fun films. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. I mean, this one, this one is, it sounds like a marketer's nightmare, you know, mm -hmm. when I lay out the plot like that. Mm -hmm. But but at that budget, once again, you're not looking to carve out yeah, yeah. the market. You're looking, So as a festival film, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really exciting. The whole yeah. visual way of telling it, it moves. I think people are get really excited about it so who's the market i think the people who love films is the market yeah. you know it, it's smart it's not aimed at a mass market but yeah yeah i think it's like to me things have to be entertaining mm -hmm. gotta be i yeah. just like oh, yeah so a I, big part of it should be yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah, absolutely right so yeah no i think i think the market's i think the market's uh anybody who loves films i think it's gonna be a really fun movie yeah it's not gonna be a hard it's not gonna be a hard so, so the the film quality in the, say in the modern day films, so to speak, is very uh, uh, has a great variance. Like uh, people even use smartphones to film parts of the movie or have a, 
totally different shots than usual with like a high quality camera. So are you using are you using these differences too? Are you like do you have different kind of cameras? We're using a Black Magic. It's called. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of the. I, I don't know. It's it's a. I don't know what exactly what you'd be looking at. Two thousand, five thousand dollars. I don't know exactly what. Yeah, it's a four K camera. So it's. You know the you know the Black Magic. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know it's a really industry standard camera for the kind of film we're making now. And it's one of the better ones going. And the nice thing is you can shoot in natural light. Mm -hmm. You know, we were shooting using street lights. Um, but I'm really not a technophile in that way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm my DOP, but that's what we're using. We're using black. Well, you can use it as a part of your expression, you know, like, uh, 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 for instance, like the smartphone. If you use a smartphone to film, then it oh. would, would look as if you look through a smartphone, you know, that kind of thing. Or... You know, I your bank. I think that's the key thing, and it's the same with music. I, I would argue, and you know, I know, I know how good yeah. you are. Um, is you, you you can't try to pretend you're using high high fi gear when you're using low fi gear. You just got to give it a, a great lo fi sound, and it's the same with this. You know, we can't pretend it's something other than it is. No, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a shame. That's just part of the aesthetic. And like yeah. you named a couple of them, there's loads of them. Like Blair Witch is the classic example. You just use that as part of the aesthetic, and people love it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, wonderful. That's great. Well, I'm really happy to talk to you, uh, Sebastian. It's really great to yeah, hear you, some of your project. It's lovely. It's it's amazing how this grows. Then, isn't that like? Don't you get totally excited about? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I can't. Oh, I'm just off. I mean, I, I'm I I, I dread back to this. I feel like I sounded like a lunatic. I'm just in the middle of it right now. We're, yeah, we're no, just, that's great. They're doing, I got somebody. I got an actor sleeping in my closet. I'm not exaggerating. Literally has a bed made up. He's sleeping. <laughs> Another actor is in my bed right now, so I can't sleep. In or he got in at 4:30 when I was waking up. So it's just I'm insane with energy. I mean, is it amazing? It's I, I I'm I'm speechless. I I just trying to keep myself from being excited because I don't think the excitement. You know, there's a good excitement, but I mm -hmm. you know I want to do a really 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 good job. So it, yeah. it requires a present and very detail oriented. Yeah. yeah. So how do you do that? How do you stay present and in this, uh, say, real thrilling moment? How do well, you, you, you know, I meditate, you know, that's okay. what I do. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then I, 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 I actively, you do checklists. I mean, I'm just always doing checklists. And right before I go, right before I call action, mm -hmm. I have a checklist that I go through. The first one is, is the scene ready to shoot? Yeah. I mean, these things sound basic, but you get so caught up in the fog of war that I call it when you're on mm -hmm. on is the scene ready to shoot have you checked in with the other actor you know yeah. are you sure when i'm directing it and acting are you sure they're ready you know yeah are there any shadows is the is there anything that on the look on here that shouldn't be and then the last thing is do we physically look correct because it drives me crazy in a movie when you get somebody who's just come out of running up the stairs or something you know he's running up somebody and he's not out of breath or he's not a little yeah. sweat a little yeah. sweaty so you know i just go through this checklist right before uh, to make sure I'm getting all the details. Because once it's shot, you know, if I'm in the edit and I feel, I thought we had a great scene, I'm looking at it and suddenly I'm going up. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a Starbucks cup right there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of situation awareness then. That's like, a good word. Almost, almost like the, the fire guys, you know, you know, you got to keep everyone in the, like, oh, no, don't run there. No, you stay right there. That kind That's of thing. And it's exactly. Because it, you know, you really have to get yourself present. Almost, you know, it's it's. I don't, I don't know. It's, it feels like I feel like it's something I've trained myself for over the years, and something that came in yeah. handy as an actor, yeah. and it comes in handy as an athlete, and it never comes in more handy than what I'm doing now. Because I got so many plates in the air, so you just get yourself in this state of hyper awareness, and you can actively do that. You go, okay, this is that moment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. just kind of drop into that headspace for a moment. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and um, the, there are 10 blocks of two days that you're shooting. Yeah. Something like that. So, and, and you're in the middle of it. So you, you did already two is what you said, or? Yeah, let me see now. We're about to do block five. Block five. Okay. So you're really in the middle of it then almost. Yeah. We're right about <coughs> in the middle of it. Yeah. There'll be 10 blocks total. So we, we will be finished up, I think, first week of June. Okay. Yeah, and I can't wait. I mean, listen, I'll send you something because I'm going to have a little assembly done of a big chunk of it. Yeah, keep me posted. Absolutely. That would be lovely. You know, yeah, any to... information you have now, do you have, do you connect this to a website or how, how do you do this or Twitter or? 
No, and I can tell you why. It's because we don't have any insurance, so I want to continue to fly. <laughs> All right. Continue to fly under the Keep radar. it quiet, yeah. I'll put it up on IMDb. <laughs> so I'll, just, I'll, 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 cut, the, I'll cut this out. I'll cut this yeah. out. <laughs> After the talk is done, we've got a big chunk coming up at the end of March, and then we're basically taking April. It's going to be a small hiatus. I'm going to, I'm going to put together a little assembly of what we have so far, because we'll have about the middle chunk of the movie at that point. And then we have to go out to to investors to try to raise the last. We got a little more money to raise it then. So at that point, I'm going to put up a website and and get everything, you know, get some clips up there. And I'd love to send it to you because I'm I'm really proud of it. I think uh, it might be the first thing I've ever done, but I'm like truly like it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Well, that sounds so good, uh, Sebastian. Really amazing. It uh, feels like a real. Um, uh, quite a challenge to keep your feet on the ground. I can imagine that too, because uh, you wanna your enthusiasm is really important too in this, and your inspiration. But at the yeah. same time, you have to stay right here. Like yeah. The whole world might collapse, but you stand on your feet. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And and what a great. I don't know. I, that's so cool. Mm. That's so. That's why I sort of thought, if not now, then when? Because I mean, I'm 39 years old. I've been doing this a long time. It's like everything you just said. You get to put everything you've learned into practice. See mm -hmm. if you're see if you're up for it. Mm -hmm. See yeah. if you're up. So, uh, yeah, one day. So, at a time. so, so are you are you also getting ideas about next projects? I do. I have another one I want to do. I've been thinking about that a bit, um, but I'm trying not to think about it too much because I want to. I want to mm -hmm. make sure. That's right. Yeah, but I have one called "Body in the Trunk" that I wrote. And I think that would be good because what I want to do, I mean, the whole point is to, that you get to do more. And so I want to, what I'd like to do, like I said, is, 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 is sort of uh, qualify, qualify ourselves for the job of producing everything in house. So I'd yeah. like to do more films, keep the budget under, under half a million dollars mm -hmm. and one every six months. So I'm looking at scripts I can do for under half a million dollars and we can produce in house with our own actors, with our own producers, yeah. things like that. So I have one called Body in the Trunk. And just briefly, it's like a, it's like a, it's 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 this idea. Have you ever? I don't know if you've ever played that 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 thought experiment with a friend where you're like, would you help your buddy if he showed up and said he killed some killed somebody? Mm -hmm. You know, would you would you help him? I feel like we've all kind of played that little thought experiment. So it's yeah. based on it's two brothers. They haven't seen each other in a while. One brother shows up with a body in the trunk, literally, yeah. and then the story unfolds from there. Yeah. <laughs> so how many how many different characters, movie characters, are there? because a body in the trunk is one, you know, it's like, that is really one that is there. So there, there, um, you see these future movies, sci-fi movies, uh, they all have kind of similar um, themes going on. Like if you, I heard somebody say, um, like, well, actually there are only 12 different, really yeah. different characters in filmmaking. Yeah. Yes. So I, do you recognize that as, as that that's working for you that way too, or are you discovering new, new angles? Well, no, I mean, I, I dig the premise. I dig the basic premise, but I think it's irrelevant because you know, that, that's like saying there's only so many kinds of people in the world. That's mm -hmm. only that, that, that you're really talking about the category you've created more than you're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no, we're sure. To me, it's what. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. That's the thing that, that matters when you're making mm -hmm. a movie. Take yeah. the exact same story you tell. I could make it mean something totally different, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. It's not about it. No, not at all. No. Oh, good, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so will there be music in the in the movie? There will. There will be. I mean, listen. That's actually an interesting. Uh, it, it it's called Bring It All Back Home. It, mm -hmm. It was originally called Bringing It All Back Home. And it, 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 I don't know why I decided to tie it to that Bob Dylan album, but I did right from the beginning. Oh. I do have the, the, I think it's, I don't know if it's practical, but I'd like to, I hear Bob Dylan is very open to allowing people to use his, his sync licenses. So we could, never, we could never get the masters. We could never like put his recordings in the movie. But one, one idea I have is to, if I can get his permission to have artists re record his, songs and i might even just from that album i would just do that album and i, and I might even do it sequentially you mm -hmm. know from start to finish which which could be very cool you know yeah 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 cool. oh wow no yeah. well that's yeah. great yeah. not yeah. great <laughs> 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 wow well sebastian thank you so much for this i think it's great that's hey, uh, I mean, yeah. That, is there anything that you want to share that that really feels like okay? Well, I, I didn't say this, and and I would love to bring that in. Well, Go I ahead. Talk. 
I just feel like I opened my stupid mouth and let everything pour out. So I'm sure there's a lot of things. <laughs> you know, right? Why use ten words when you can use fifty? Um, uh, no, but it was just such a joy to, to talk to you like this and connect with you in this way. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I know this is a teacher and a practitioner. It's it's so cool to connect with you about art because I love your art. You know, and the, that was such a cool thing to me when you first sent me your music, and I played it. I played it for a bunch of people here. Huh. I've heard huh. and it went, wow, like. No, that's good. That's good. I really, you know, I listened to that. There was that show you did a few years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I listened to it so many times. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was a pleasure, Ben. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Me Thank you so much. And uh, I will, I will um, say part of it. Uh, maybe I'll send it to you that you can listen to it first, or you want me to? Uh, I can. I just use it. It's fine. Please, yeah. It's not for a big audience. It's just like I use it just to to share this moment that I have with you. That's it. Oh. Ah, for no absolutely. other purpose. <laughs> no, no. I didn't when you said, you know, today, like today's a shooting day. At first, I thought, no, well, maybe I should schedule for another day. And then I thought, well, maybe it's perfect. Yeah, yeah maybe. It's absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm really happy that you did, and uh, lots of success with your movie. Oh, I'm thanks. really curious how it will be, and 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 enjoy the process. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's already, as far as I'm concerned, already been a huge success. But I can't wait to yeah. uh, show you. Great. Awesome. Okay, I'll see you. Real. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>